Hello, welcome back. And um, we're gonna start as a little sew along. I have a free pattern for you and it'll be linked in the description if you're interested. And it's going to be for this split tool belt that I made, I think last May of 2022. And I got a lot of people um, really interested in the pattern. I did draft it live on stream, um, but I've made it a little simpler. And I'm also gonna sew it a couple of different ways. So if you don't want binding, or you don't have webbing, or you don't have a buckle, I'm going to give you options. So hopefully I can keep both of these. It's gonna be a part one and a part two. Hopefully I'm gonna keep these nice and short, but they're probably gonna be a little bit longer. So hopefully you're up for that. Um, let me show you a few pictures of my tool belt. All right, so this is my tool belt. And so the reason I do it split, so I'll show you, it's split in the front and in the back. Let me, um, let's see, which one I want, okay. So this is the side view. You can configure your pockets however you want. They're all elasticized at the top. And then you can also put a, a flap on one or two or whatever. I'm gonna put a flap on one. And so you see how the back is split. The reason I do this is so that, first of all, you can squat and you can bend over while you're using this little tool belt and it won't hang up on anything. Um, and you don't really need the, the stuff in the back, right? And I don't really want anything covering in the front as well. I just really like to be mobile. So it's a split tool belt and both sides are gonna be sewn the same. So you can configure your pockets to fit whatever you want. I'll tell you in the live stream, I spent a lot of time thinking about what I wanted each pocket to do. And let me tell you, when I'm out there in the yard using it, and I use this every weekend, I do not care what pockets for what. I shove whatever I want into whatever pocket. So don't sweat it too much, if you're, especially if you're making this as a gift for someone else. All right, so let's get to the things that you're gonna need. All right, so there's going to be two pattern pieces. It's two pages, and they're both cut on the fold. And there's gonna be uh, all kinds of instructions or anything like that. It's gonna be free through the end of December of this year, so check it out if you want it. And you're going to need, um, I'll have the yardage available for you in this little download because I don't have it off the top of my head, but you're gonna want two pieces that are kind of your main apron that the pockets are gonna sit on. And um, I'm using this like, it's like a hemp twill that's got a waterproof coating on it. It's left over from a vest that I made for my husband. I got it at Hearts Fabric. It's really nice. It's got kind of a, a thicker hand, um, but it's, and it's kind of a weird color. It's kind of this moss color that I actually really love. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna use this as the base and I needed two of those. And then we also need the pockets that are gonna sit on top. Now you saw in the picture that my pocket looked like two different colors and that's because I added a canvas bottom to the lower half of my pocket because I stick really pokey things in my pockets. And so this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the pocket in canvas. So you can do this as two layers for your pocket if you're using a really lightweight fabric or a heavier weight, just one layer of a heavier weight. And you're gonna need um, two, one for each pocket. And that's this piece right here. You're gonna cut two on the fold, okay? And that's your pockets. And so like I said, I am using this very, very lightweight, really nice linen on top because it's the scraps from a project. I'm gonna make this for my mom. Nobody else is gonna get the scraps of this fabric because I love it so much. <laughs> so I've been hoarding it. I even had to piece this together. You can't even probably tell, but there's a little seam right there. And then I'm just using this kind of um, funny, like really lightweight twill, it's very lightweight on the back. And I'm gonna treat this as one piece of fabric. And then hopefully that will be enough to protect this outer fabric. Um, I also am using a darker fabric than mine was because I noticed that mine, my, the first day I wore mine, mine got filthy. I'd, I'd have it sitting here showing you, but you'd be like, whoa, stare me. It, it's dirty, it's really dirty. <laughs> I get a lot of use out of it. All right, and so next, if you want a pocket flap, there's one on the pattern here, a little one right here, cut on the fold. Now this one right here is bigger than what I need. So this is the size I'm gonna use, and look, it's, it's probably almost an inch smaller. So um, when we get to the pocket divisions or once you've planned out what pocket sizes you want, or if you're gonna stick with mine here, I would cut down this pocket, like just put the fold line about an inch in, all right? So if you look at this is divided into three, one, and then two, and this is on the fold, three. But this, this pocket right here, this is gonna be gathered up, right? 
So really, it's got to fit something that's a little bit smaller. So even this flap might be a little too big. So, and that's one of the weird little things I had. I came in um, that I came across when I sewed mine is that my flap was almost a little too big and it kind of got hung up on the seam there. All right, um, let's see. Lastly, we're gonna sew this one a little differently than the way I did mine, and that is so that it is um, more able for you to make it for anyone of any size without knowing a whole lot about them. So that we're gonna put a casing that is sitting above that whole tool belt, and then the webbing or belt that you're gonna use is gonna go through that casing. So it's gonna sit above that belt like this. And a little casing. So you're gonna need two of these casings. And then this way, because mine, what I did was I stitched the webbing directly to the tool belt. That makes that the little tool belt um, fixed. So those pockets cannot slide around on me. Um, and you might, you know, someone else may want them slid to the back, um, maybe slid to the front. Maybe they, you know, you wouldn't want to make it so that they were like canted towards the front or back and then they didn't really work for them. So that's why we're going to do this. It's going to be more adjustable. All right. All right. So let's talk notions. So like I said, you're going to need two of your casing. If you want a pocket flap, um, you need your main tool belt and then you need two pockets or you can line them. All right. Now, if you don't want to use binding at all, you're going to need four of that main tool belt piece. All right. So now you're getting into more fabric usage, but you don't have to use any binding. All right. And if you're going to use a non-webbing belt, you're gonna need a pretty large piece, a uh, long piece of fabric. I've got it broken down here. I would recommend making your fabric belt finish no more than one and a half inches wide. This webbing here is two inches wide and I'm giving you measurements for either a two inch or one and a half inch wide belt. This is just cotton webbing. I have it left over sitting on my website for forever now from a project from a long time ago. Actually, this is one I ordered incorrectly once by accident. So I still have some. So I'm just glad it somewhat coordinates with this project. <laughs> and I like wider belts because they don't crumple when I'm wearing them. They're a little more comfortable. Um, the cotton is a little more comfortable as well. And if you want to make a fabric one, the reason I say make it like one and a half inches or narrower, like one to one and a half, you're going to be able, you're going to need to tie it in a tie if you don't have a buckle. All right, that's what this is here. This is a buckle. And this buckle here is made for two inch wide. Oh, I think it's made for two inch wide webbing. Oh, maybe it's made for one and a half inch. Well, I'll get my two inch buckle out because I have one of those too. So you're going to need a buckle that fits whatever you're using for your belt. If you're not using a buckle, you're going to need to use a narrower belt so you can tie it when they're wearing it. All right. All right. And so for a webbing belt at one and a half inch or two inches wide, you're gonna need the high hip measurement. You can guess what their high hip measurement is. And you need to add 12 inches to that because you're gonna need to be able to thread it through here and give them also some room for adjustability, all right? And then if you're gonna do a fabric belt, and that's the same if you're gonna do a fabric belt but use a buckle, same measurement, all right? But if you're gonna use a fabric belt that's gonna tie onto the person, you're gonna need, um, I'm gonna suggest you make it one and a half inches wide finished. So you're gonna to need to cut this piece of fabric six inches wide by their high hip measurement plus 26 inches. So that's a very long piece of fabric no matter what size someone's hip is. And if you're doing that, if you have to piece it together, do a diagonal seam just like this. So when you cut out your pieces, cut a 45 degree angle along the fabric and then piece it together like that. You'll thank me later if you do this at an angle. And it's because when we go to sew this, you don't even feel this seam. It feels completely the same thickness going through out this whole belt here. And this is my little sample belt. I'm gonna show you how to sew it. So just make sure that you do that, that diagonal seam because you need it uh, to be quite long in order to be able to tie. Tying anything takes up a lot of length. All right, um, you're gonna need some binding if you're if you're binding. You're also gonna need two pieces of elastic. Um, if you're using a very heavy weight pocket fabric, I would say cut this maybe two pieces of elastic, like 11 inches. I'm gonna say, oh no, no, wait, 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 sorry. 
I'm gonna say you're gonna cut it about um, 13 inches. This right here was cut 14 inches and this is a very lightweight fabric. So it's not gonna get stretched out um, when I put it on. It's actually gonna have a really good return because this is fairly lightweight. If this were heavier weight, it would stay slightly stretched out after I sewed it on and then you'd have a pocket that's too wide to go onto your apron. So if you're doing a really stiff fabric, cut it about 13 inches and maybe even like gauge before you sew it on there. If you're doing a lighter weight fabric, cut two pieces, 14 inches. You can use, this is a three eighths inch wide elastic. You can use half inch wide, whatever you want, all right? All right, so one more note about pattern pieces. If you are um, in regards to the elastic. Now, I'm gonna sew this by overlocking the elastic to the edge of the pocket and then turning it back and stitching it down. This is a pretty fiddly width to do that, but I just thought it'd be a great way to demonstrate how to do that because I know people have been wanting to do more of surging their elastic onto their garments. If, you, if that is not for you or you're like, no, Ceremy, I, I really need a casing, because of whatever fabric you got going on. Maybe you don't have a serger. Maybe you just don't like sewing that way. That's totally great. I what I like about a casing is that it's going to be really clean finished looking. So if you do a, a casing, this is, this will pretend like this is a miniature version. Here's my apron and here's my pocket pattern. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut another one of these pockets out, but only the top little bit here and make a facing, all right? And this facing width right here, you're gonna cut this, let's see, you're gonna cut this, let's say we're gonna do a quarter inch plus a quarter inch plus another quarter inch, three quarters of an inch plus the width of your elastic. That's the width I want you to cut this little casing. So just trace off that top edge, this right here, of your pocket piece and then Measure down that amount that I just told you, three quarters of an inch plus the width of your elastic and make a parallel line, cut it on the fold, and now you have a facing, all right? Just as simple as that. And I'll show you how to cut, uh, sew that later on. All right, um, I think that's everything. That's all the pieces. So I'm gonna get right into sewing it a little bit because um, I only want this to be two videos because just in case you guys are like, I don't really need a tool belt, Ceremy. I'm like cozied up by the fire this time of year. <laughs> I don't really want to think about gardening. Um, I have a gardener in my life, so I'm making this for them. So, all right, so let's see, let's see. So I'm gonna talk about the belt first. So if you're doing a fabric belt, this is how you're going to make this. This is great for straps of all sorts. It takes a ton of fabric, but it's really easy to sew and it's the nicest strap you'll ever use. Hands down, I love the way this strap feels. So you're going to cut this, like I said, if you want it to finish one and a half inches wide, you're gonna, fin you're gonna cut this six inches wide by that long length that I told you, all right? And then the first thing you're gonna do is you're going, once you piece it together, if you have any diagonal seams, piece it together, then you're gonna iron it in half like this, open it up, and then iron to that fold you just created, and then iron it again, all right? And now we're just gonna edge stitch it. And now if you want to um, turn under the end here, like this, and we'll tuck that in here didn't really cut this very precisely. And then we will sew it. Let's tuck that in there a little better. If you don't wanna tuck in these ends here, you can always hem them like this. That's another option. And that's sometimes nice if you're using a buckle because you can hem, get it onto the buckle and then hem over the edge. And then if you hem it in a certain way, the, the tail will never slip out of the buckle. So I'll show you that. We'll just leave this raw, just like this. And let's say we wanted to do that. Once it goes through the buckle, there are ways that people will hem this like this. So let's do this once. I'm trying to remember how to do this. <laughs> and then they do it one more time but they do it kind of big like this and they leave this little tail. So if you want to clean finish that, do like that. And then, oh, I should have done it like that to begin with, huh? 
Vlogmas is like doing a live video in a way. I feel like I can't make any mistakes or anything. <laughs> All right. So now I'll hem it again, but back here, they do this a lot in really um, important garments that you just don't want to fall off because of safety things like uh, life jackets and things. And see, look, now when this pulls, it will get caught on this little thing here. This isn't the right size buckle for this, but it would make it so that it kind of hooks on there. So that's another option. All right, so that's how you're gonna make your belt if you're using a fabric belt or tie. And this is why, this is one inch wide, so maybe you want a one inch wide belt. I just think one and a half would be comfortable in the person. One inch wide is gonna be a lot easier to tie. Maybe if you wanna get fancy, you could taper the ends. You, you see where I'm going here? So making a belt, it's a lot of fabric, but it will be a nice belt. All right. Let's put my buckle right there in the candy basket. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're gonna do with our apron is we're going to prepare our pocket. So now I'm gonna treat this like one piece of fabric and I'm gonna put this one, I just want it wrong sides together like that. I don't really want the yellow showing on the inside like this. And I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna overlock the top edge and I'm gonna include my elastic at the same time. We're diving right in there. There's really not a lot of steps with this apron. Um, and um, it's gonna seem like a lot because I'm gonna show you two different ways to sew it, but you'll see. <laughs> Let's see, where's my iron? Here we go. All right, I gotta step over the holiday lights. So uh, when you overlock elastic, one thing that can be helpful if you don't wanna cut this perfectly to length, leave yourself like an inch hanging off the edge there so you have something to hold on to. That is really helpful. And I like doing this from the right side. I'm gonna get it in here started and then I'm gonna hold it. I have a whole video dedicated to how to serge elastic onto a waistband. And um, it's one of my most viewed videos. So I'm gonna give you my little lecture that I give you in there. And that is when you're stretching something like this and putting it through the serger, like I'm pulling on this elastic, you do not wanna pull while you're sewing. It's okay if it's pulled and you're holding it static like this, like you're holding it stretched out and then you sew and hold it like that, that's fine. But don't pull on this as you're sewing. You do not want to break your needles. You don't want to bend anything in there or disrupt um, how the needles go down below. They can hit things if they get bent or broken. They can hit other things down there which will disrupt the timing. All right, so now I have my little tail back here and I'm gonna hold on to this and pull gently a little bit just to get it going there. And I'm, see, look at, see how I'm holding my elastic? And the reason I figured out where to do that is that I took the piece all the way to the end here and I stretched out, you probably can't see it on the camera, I stretched it all the way out, I find like a halfway point and now I hold it like that. And I hold back here because I really want to keep this static, which means it's not going to move while I sew. You see, I'm just moving it like this through the machine. All right, we'll go all the way to the end on this one. Keep these edges lined up. falling a little bit away there. Having the two layers is a little trickier. And see, this is what I mean by making your elastic a little bit longer because then you'd have something to hold on to right here. So I'm just gonna hold this while I go through. Like that. And now I have this nice gathered up little pocket and all we'll have to do is turn it and top stitch it down. So let's do our other one. And I know that this might be a little bit nerve wracking for some folks if they haven't done something like this on their serger. So just like I said, the only thing you have to worry about is making sure you're not pulling on something after the machine has started. If you've pulled and stretched it before and you're holding it static, you're gonna be just fine. All right, let's line this up. And if you need things to be more secure, like with, uh, 
pins, don't use pins. Try and use something like a binder clip or clover clips or a hair clip, whatever you have. You can even tack this in a few places on your regular straight stitch machine, just like tack, tack, and then you won't have to fiddle with it as much as I am. So now we have our nicely gathered at the top little pocket here. And we're just gonna turn this down and stitch it. We're just gonna edge stitch it right here next to that surged edge. And this is the same thing. Like you wanna keep this stretched out while you sew. Don't stretch it after you start sewing. And I'm just kind of trying to fold it right there along that elastic. So I get a nice, clean, even width. This is my favorite way to do a waistband, but I do it in the round, not flat like this. All right, and then there's our pocket. I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bit too big for my apron, because look, this right here isn't stretched because I was talking too much when I started off right there. Look at that, it's not even stretching. But we'll figure that out. I can always trim this off if I want. We're, it's a no sweat sewing project, all right? So don't, don't sweat it too much. Just have fun with it. Think of it as a way to learn a skill while making a gift. All right, and then I just trim this flush just like that. Same with here, get rid of these little threads, make sure they go to the raw edge there. All right, and so next we're going to lay these onto the background here. All right, so let's put one aside and one of these aside, all right? And then we're just gonna line this up. And so we're gonna gather up this bottom edge and we're just gonna kinda go like, just kind of in the middle of this curve here, all right? So I'm gonna put my stitch length a little bit longer. And if you're doing two layers of fabric like me, just make sure they don't shift. And I like doing two layers here, or two rows, sorry. I feel like I didn't really um, make that stitch length long enough, but we'll see, right? All right, just grabbing the ends. I could have used my serger to do this too. The serger has a differential on it that will gather up fabric. I find this to be a little bit hit and miss as far as the amount it'll do. It's really, really great on super lightweight fabrics because generally the amount of differential someone has built into the garment that you're trying to gather up doesn't match what the serger is set at. There are machines that just do a differential feed and differential just means that it's making the fabric a different length from when it started than when you're done sewing with it. So in some cases you can use it to stretch out the fabric and in other places you can use it, I've got this little piece of thread right here, that's what's plaguing me. You can use it to scrunch up the fabric. I find it really helpful on really lightweight knits, lightweight fabrics, and in kids' clothes mostly. Oh, come on, you're just really not gonna gather for me, are you? My stitch length was kind of short when I got on because I had been stitching some, I st stitched that center seam actually on a really short stitch length because I wanted it to look seamless. Okay, it's my bottom row, so we're just gonna ignore the bottom row. I like two rows of, my, of gathers, I think it looks nicer. The gathers will lay nicer on the fabric with two rows. I hate gathering stitches. <laughs> I hardly ever make things with gathering stitches. Not a big fan. 
of sewing gathering stitches. But two rows, better than one. And uh, I think that's partly why I don't like it because I know that. <laughs> all right, so this is probably two gathered because I had to get all the way to this other end. We just need it to fit on our little apron. The reason it's gathered is so that you can have some volume in your pockets. You can have some stuff in there. All right. Okay, so now if you are going the pro binding um, path, stick with me here. If you're not going with the pro binding path, that means that you have cut two of this one right here, all right? And when you do that, let's say this little pocket has been gathered up and it now sits on your apron like mine is, right? You're going to line this up along that edge down there. Here, let's get it lining up a little bit better. Just like this. And um, if you wanna do your pocket divisions right now, you can, but I would wait until after this next step. So then you're gonna take your other one, you're gonna lay it right sides together and you're gonna sew around this perimeter edge here at like a quarter of an inch seam, pretty small seam. All right. So again, this is if you don't wanna bind the perimeter. All right, and then you're gonna to want to clip into this curve. I'm doing this really quickly, obviously, it didn't line up right there. Clip into this curve really nicely, turn it right side out. Press it really good. Like this. We'll press it really good. Remember, this would be your gathered edge there. I'll show you how to do the casing at the end as well. Sorry, I forgot to show you that already. So, and then we can edge stitch this edge right here, if you want. All right, so if you don't wanna bind, that's what you're gonna do. Now, if you're gonna do the casing, of course I, I cut that off, you would sew this little casing before you've attached it to the apron here. Sew it right sides together and then flip it to the inside. Now you can turn under that edge a quarter of an inch and top stitch it down, leave the ends open and then you can slip your elastic in there um, and then um, tack it at the each end and it'll scrunch up. Um, if you have an overlock, you don't have to turn under that last edge. You could also overlock it and top stitch it down. So I'm gonna cut this off and show you how to sew this real quick because I'm a very thorough teacher <laughs> sometimes. I think I try to and then I realize I forget things like how to show how to sew this as a casing rather than binding. And I said I would show you that. All right, so this is our pocket. Here's our little casing that I've now really butchered down the other pocket. And we're gonna sew this at a pretend quarter inch seam allowance. And it's very small. All right. And then I would, personally, I would understitch this. So I would press the seam allowance towards the facing. And then I would understitch this if you want though, you could uh, turn this to the inside. And if you wanna overlock this edge, overlock it before you attach, it'll be a little easier. But if you're not, turn it under and edge stitch it down, right? And then go back and top stitch the top. I'll show you in just a second here. So let's pretend like I ironed it. So if you're not, don't wanna do the under stitch thing, I really should have made this bigger for my sample. This is just too narrow. <laughs> But once it's turned under, this edge is turned under and stitched down. If you don't want to turn under, you don't have to, but I think you should right there because it will get a lot of um, pulling and friction and abrasion um, and the elastic is going to, you know, cinch it in there. And I think that, I think just finishing this edge is going to be really important. So you need to finish it by turning it under and stitching it down or overlock it and then stitch it down. And then you can... Edge stitch, edge stitch this top edge if you didn't want to understitch it. Then put your elastic in there. And, and then what I would do is put your elastic in your casing, tack it at one end, and then pull your elastic, lining it up to your apron down here, right? Pull the elastic until this is the right width. Sew it down, 
and then cut the elastic off. And then that way you'll have it fitting your apron just right. All right, so let's get back to this one here. And we're going to, let's um, give ourselves, this, this Santa fur is just plaguing me. Let's give ourselves some notches where our pocket is gonna end. I'll try and remember to add that to the pattern. All right, right here. Cause we don't want it to look crooked, you know, from side to side. All right, make sure I have the right side of my fabric up. And I'm gonna line this one up over here. And this one over here. And then um, I had a center notch to line it up down there, just like that. That's looking pretty good. My This up here could be a little bit more scrunched, so I'm gonna let a little bit of this hang off like that because this is a no sweat project, right? We didn't engineer it for everybody's different fabric, so we're gonna have to be a little bit lenient with how it works, all right? All right, so now I'm just gonna tack this right here. I'm not gonna go all the way around the edge yet. Okay, and now I'm gonna do my pocket divisions. I'm gonna get my pattern piece out that I have sitting right here, right? Um, you saw me with the pattern pieces, where'd they go? <laughs> they probably fell. All right, well, we'll just measure. I know that they are about 5.3 inches. So we're gonna be right here. And then right here like that. They can be different widths. You can even make as many as you want. I'm just doing three pockets, all right? And so now, if you wanna give yourself a more of a guide so that you know you're kind of, you know, dividing this up really well too. So let's see, I'm gonna do this more like here and here. All right, there we go. And keep my gathers straight. can't lose our all. We're about to do some binding. All right, there's one. Then where's my little nip there? There it is right there. That's kind of going more for like an angle that looked good rather than um, where that ended up up there. All right, and so now we have our gathered pockets here. And now we can stitch down this perimeter edge the rest of the way. That'll help hold it in place while we do this. And then we're just gonna let these gathers, kind of, I'm kind of distributing them nicer. And just let those gathers sit there. We're probably gonna have to trim down, it's mainly because I'm going so fast, I'm gonna have to trim down this edge so it'll fit inside my binding. So if you're doing a nicer job, good job, because it'll be a little easier to bind. All right, get rid of this pin here. And now I'm gonna just trim this down so I have a nice clean edge. And so I'm going to bind this edge now and we're going to leave the casing later. We're going to do the binding first. Um, and if you want a pocket flap, I'm going to show you in the next video how to do that. And I'm going to do my other apron side in between the videos. And so then I'll have two of these when, when I come back on the part two. All right, so here's my binding. 
And if you did the sew two together, right sides together, then you're pretty happy you're not doing any binding right now, right? All right. So we're going to start on the wrong side. Always start on the wrong side. I'm leaving this little tail because there's a little seam there. I might as well just let it hang off. And I'm going to gently pull. I can see my seam here, and I'm just going to take a look at that where that's at so that I know to enclose it. I'm just gently pulling the binding a little bit. Quarter inch seam. My binding was cut one and three eighths inch wide or one and a half inches wide will work as well. I don't pre-fold it. You'll, it's a lot easier to sew if you don't pre-fold it in my opinion. And no one's gonna see the back of this apron like when it's being worn, so don't, don't sweat it too much, all right? All right, now we're gonna trim this down a little bit more just to make sure that the seam allowance is nice and even. It's like this. Remember, I like the, the seam allowance to fill the inside of the binding. I don't really like it to be slack or trimmed down too much. All right. I'm going to trim this little back stitch here and this back stitch there. All right. We're going to pull this to the right side. If you want to press it, you can. I don't think it's that necessary. All right, and we're gonna turn it under and we're gonna go just past that seam I just sew. Just put the fold like right up to it or right past it so you can't see it. And now we're gonna stitch. Now make sure your needle lands to the right of that first stitch line and then all of your stitching will land on the binding. Logic, right? When you get into these curves, because we gently pulled, it's gonna wanna turn to the right side here kind of nicely, I'm just trimming that thread. But I'm gonna have to kind of pull this a little bit like this. I'm gonna pull it, I'm gonna turn this edge under, and then I'm gonna place it down like that. And this is when my awl gets really handy. This is such a great project to practice binding because it's kind of low risk, right? It's a tool belt. And if it's for you and you're gonna use it in the yard, like just practice, right? I'm trying to cover up this line of, that extra line of gathering stitches I didn't in, even end up using. I have some um, right up here on the fabric. I'm just gonna leave that showing and I'm gonna take it out. Sometimes you, you know, you win some, you lose some. No big deal though. We can just take it out because it's a basting stitch. I think I forgot I wasn't using gray thread. <laughs> it's blending in okay though. <laughs> I'm surprised how I how much I like all these fabrics together. They're kind of an odd assortment. I'm hoping my, my mom likes them. Okay. Ooh, this is looking so good. This looks so much classier than mine. <laughs> all right, so see there's some little gathering stitches st sitting right there. So I'll just take those out with a seam ripper. And then this is what the other side looks like. So I didn't really fall off of the binding except down here when I wanted to pull the binding up higher. But there we go. Um, so now I have one half of my apron. And then this is when I would decide, okay, you know, where do I want a flap to go? And what I'm thinking is that I'm gonna use a couple of magnets and I'll show you this in the next video where I'm gonna put a magnet here Probably should have already attached it here, but we'll we'll just go back in time and do it. <laughs> and um, I think that would be really handy because if your hands have gloves on them or whatever, I think things like magnetics and Velcro are really nice and um, it'll be quicker and easier to use. Um, and these are just leftover magnets from a project I used to have. Um, so they're pretty strong. And uh, I know they're not really the typical type of thing. They're just... Uh, they work really good for things like this, but I do have to put them in a little casing on the fabric, so you'll see. All right, so here we are. We've got our good start of our apron. So when I come back 
Tomorrow, we're going to do the casing for the belt, the flap. That's about it. Like we're almost done, right? You just need to do two sides. Um, and uh, hopefully those little workarounds with the facing and the binding are gonna help you out. All right, so let's, let's write our letter to Santa. We're not getting away with not writing a letter to Santa because I feel like these are working. People are telling me, oh my gosh, you're manifesting me free sewing time. Someone else is getting the things they had wanted. So um, the lucky antlers are key. I think they're key. <laughs> All right, what are we gonna ask for today? Um, let's just start, dear Santa, dear Santa, dear Santa, selfish time. Um, well, you know, I, I was kind of recently inspired to, um, address this. So let's, 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 let's just say this. Dear Santa, please ask people to stop asking me to hem their pants <laughs> and curtains. Curtains are the worst. Curtains are the worst. They're huge. They're huge. And if you don't get those straight, it's so obvious, right? And a lot of times you get like a pre-made curtain panel and it wasn't cut straight to begin with or it wasn't cut on the grain. So even if you are just hemming it, because it's not cut on the grain, the curtain will hang at an angle because the fabric is, that's what it's doing, right? Or they didn't put the rod pocket in straight or something. So, <sighs> yeah. I don't get asked this that much anymore, thankfully. And I'm gonna tell you, this is my little secret. I, I share this all the time, it's not much of a secret. If you do get asked this a lot, what I started doing a long time ago, um, cause my, I don't have an ego in this, honestly. I just like, whatever, if this is what I do, it's, it's uh, I am very comfortable with my skill set because I also know what I, what I need to work on and what I need to learn, right? So. Um, my ego is not very big with this as far as um, saying to people, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> so when sometimes someone will say, hey, can you hit my pants? And I say, oh, yeah, actually, I just don't know how to do that. It's the first time I did it. I remember my heart was racing because I wanted to try it out. And I because I and I was a being asked so much at the time. I had no time for other people's projects. I had a full time job, uh, a business I was starting. You know, I was I was busy. It doesn't matter what, what, even if I wasn't busy, I just wanted to lay on the couch and watch Star Trek. It doesn't matter. Um, I don't want to sew for other people sometimes. Like sometimes in my life I do. My mom, I'll do anything for her, right? Or anyone in my family, really. Um, but people I don't know are strangers. It's just, it's just not an option for me. I'm not interested anymore, especially for free. <laughs> so um, I remember saying that the first time. I just said, you know, I'm sorry, I don't know how. They knew me well enough to know that, like what I did and stuff. And the look on their face was so satisfying because they were like, oh. And it was one of those things where I feel like a multitude of things was going through their head, like one of which was, really? She doesn't? Like, that's so easy. Oh, well, if it's so easy, why don't I do it? <laughs> and then, then they feel like they've embarrassed you because they've pointed out now something you don't know how to do. Like, li literally, I do not have... A dog in this fight. I my ego is not tied to you thinking I know how to hem pants or I don't know how to pin, hem pants. Like figure it out yourself. <laughs> so um, I, I started doing that, and it's been one of the most satisfying things. It's the the only white lie I consistently tell. Uh, the last person asked me was a landlord at my last building, and I just remember his, the look on his face was just so priceless. And that guy in particular really needed that. So, <laughs> all right, Santa, do your best. That's a tough world out there. Sarami and the gang. Woo woo. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next time. Um, happy sewing. Uh, hopefully you get caught up by tomorrow. Maybe, maybe. Tool belts, right? Okay, bye.